Hello everybody and welcome back to, I should probably welcome myself back to be honest, it's been that long. Um, new PC time, new everything time, finally found the time time. Um, I'm afraid hard drive gone, ruined, lost all of our old stuff, so we will start a brand new adventure. Um, I will be doing the first three or four episodes as beginner's guides. Um, so for those of you who already know how to play the game, um, or already know my playstyle, or just can't be bothered to watch them, uh, yeah, these will be to be avoided. They will just be the normal, beginning, regular stuff that you always have to do. Now, let's change all of the difficulties. Let's keep all of that as it is. Everything is just a normal standard. Um, missing crews respawn? Nope. Uh, allow quick loading? <gasps> nope. That's going to cause me some kind of problems. Uh, no entry patches yet, yeah, that's fine. And allow reverting flights, nope. So, this could go very, very, very horribly wrong very, very quickly. Very, very quickly indeed. But it's what we should do. So, let's go ahead and call this BRG NM2. NM for no mods. Yeah, because that's fun. Um, I know I did did specify in a few other that I would. Did I manage to get out of the time? Um, that I was going to be doing a modded series. Not yet. Oh, I still have far too much fun playing the game of vanilla. Uh, an awful lot of fun. Um, I also know a lot of things have changed. A hell of a lot of things have changed. And I really haven't got into details on any of those whatsoever. Um, so, enough rambling. Um, into beginner mode style, let's have a quick look at what happens when you s when you start your first game. Um, you you presented with this screen. Um, this shows you KSC or Kerbal Space Center. Um, this is where all of your wonderful wonderful adventure begins. Um, can you scroll out? You can scroll out. Uh, obviously not all that far. Right, so let's have a quick look round. Over here, if you left click on this, you can see... No, you, don't, you can't left click on that. You can right click on it. That's the launch pad. Anybody reckon they know what that does? I reckon I do. Um, yeah, funny enough, that's where you launch all your vessels from. Uh, at the moment, it's facility level 1. It's going to cost you 75,000 credits to upgrade it. Uh, at the moment, as you can see here, our maximum vessel size is 20 meters by 21.2 meters. Okay, we just make a giant cubish thing. Um, and can only weigh 18 tons. Okay, doke. Over here, this tiny little one over here, this is mission control. If we left click on mission control, we can go in. Uh, and see that Gene Cameron here is ready to give us some missions. Uh, at the moment, as you see here, active contracts are zero. We can have up to two, so we could choose two of these, two of these missions. Uh, in fact, we're going to choose two of these missions as we're here, as we're here. Gather scientific data from Kerbin. Yep, we can do that. Um, it's going to give us an advance of four thousand credits to help us build a ship, and on completion, it's going to give us seven thousand six hundred credits. Uh, one science unit, or one unit of science, and three units of reputation. Uh, if we fail it, we will lose 4,480, so there's a little bit of penalisation there. Uh, we're we're going to take that uh, and launch our first vessel. We're going to take that one again and see that again. Advance of only 2,000, uh, completion of 3,008, and you get one-on-one -on -one of science and reputation uh, alike. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take both of those. The next building, this is the Space Plane Hangar, or Space Plane Assembly Building, SAB. This is where you build... Are you ready for this? Space planes. Uh, or actual planes. Um, in this mode, as you can see, I've just selected that part. This builds everything horizontally. Yeah, like so. So if this was a plane, it would shoot off on the runway and then take off and go up into the air. Um, even though these are rocket parts. Uh, yeah, let's exit there. Uh, oh, cancel. No, let's get rid of that because we don't want to just go. Oi! Go away. Thank you. Um, this building here is... Come on. This building here is the vehicle assembly building, and this is where we build rockets. I'm not going to click on this yet because this is where we need to go right towards building our first rocket. This builds things vertically so they can shoot up into the air off the launch pad. The space plane hangar will automatically put stuff at the end of the runway here when you launch it. 
the VAB will automatically put things here. You can swap them and move them around, um, but you have to do it manually. So you build a plane and then you fly it all the way over to here and launch it from the launch pad, which would be weird. Um, this is the astronaut complex. Let's click here. Okie doke. Welcome to the astronaut complex. These are our active kerbinauts. This is Jebediah Kerman. He's the boss. He is just awesome. He is my favourite Kerbal. He's everybody's favourite Kerbal. He's absolutely crazy, completely and utterly fearless, and good fun to have around. He is also a pilot, as you can see here. He is a pilot. Bill Kerman, engineer, pain in the ass. Bob Kerman, scientist, another pain in the ass. You'll find out why as the things go on. Um, actually, they're not pains in the ass at all. They don't talk. They can't actually do anything to upset you. Um, they annoy me because they constantly try and jump in the rockets to fly them, and I'm like, uh, no. Um, Jebediah Kerman is a bad S pilot, which means nothing scares him. So when he's all flying around in the rockets or flying around in planes or about to smash into the ground, he's all happy. Valentina Kerman, uh, the first female Kerbalot to be introduced to KSP. Um, she is also a bad S, so she doesn't care what's going on. And she's also cool and she's also a pilot. These are all the other pilots, that, or engineers, or scientists, all the other cabinauts, uh bolstering the back ranks, ready and waiting for one of them to die, or us need more of them because they're out on missions or such such. So this is where you would hire them, and as you can see, it costs sixty-five thousand five hundred for your first one. Not cool. Very expensive. Um, administration building. Not even going to bother. Have a look at it. You can swap stuff, change how much reputation and funds and science and stuff you get, and you can get grants for bailouts and all oh, just never bothered with it don't see the point I'm sure people that do know the game uh, and if anybody does think they have an actually valid reason for using this then cool by all means let me know um, or shout at me for abuse at me over the internet I don't care um, yeah just it's there it's cool it does what it does this is research and development uh, we'll go into that last because it's my second most favourite building this one here the tracking station okie doke I'm guessing you can figure out what this does. This shows you the universe as it is. It's the tracking station for Tennessee. Um, we can view the entire solar system from here. You'd also be able to view any flights that you've got currently going or satellites that are orbiting Kerbin or whatever you've got out there if you put anything out onto the moon or the moon, sorry, which is just there, look, that's the moon. Um, so yeah, this is the planet Kerbin. The KSC is... I've forgotten. I think it's here. I can't remember. What a tip. I've actually forgotten where the KSC is. Is it there? No. There it is. That's it there. It's definitely that one. Honestly. Because I remember stuff. Yeah, I, I, of course it is because it's got the little eye only thing there. Why was I thinking it was... Uh, it does look a bit similar and it's got the little eye but it's not it, trust me. That is it there. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's the planet Kerbin. There's the moon which we probably won't be going to first. And there's Minmus, which we probably will be going to first, and I will explain why as and when we get there. So yeah, cool. Planet Kerbin. There's the moon. Gonna have a quick look at that. Oh, it's all small. And then... Sorry about the voice. And then there's Minmus, which is a really cool planet. Really funky. Oh, I love it. Giant frozen rock mountains. And see it? This blue bit. This is ice, so it's all frozen water, so it's all flat and easy to land on. Yeah, um, the gravity on Minmus is also uh, a lot lower than it is on the moon, and extremely more so than on Kevin, so there's less fuel to land. Anyway, here we go. I've scrolled all the way out. There's the solar system. Elu, I've never been there. Jewel, never been there. Drez, never been there. Duna, I've never been there. So I'll show you where I have been. I haven't been to Eve. I haven't been to Moho. I certainly haven't been to the Sun. I've been myself personally with my Uber Elite skills to Kerbin. Done that. I've been to the Moon. Yep. And I've been to Minmus. Never got any further than that. And hopefully in this series, as the beginner's series ends and me just dicking around playing Kerbal Space Plow 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 Glam Plow Glam program continues, uh, I will get there. Hopefully. But counting chickens and all that nonsense. Um, so yeah, that's cool, that's the assembly building, uh, we'll have a little bit more look at it in detail at a later date when we've got some flights going on. But yeah, this is Kerbin in all its glory, we've got the two polar caps there, um, all different kinds of biomes, different places, 
Um, yeah, that's enough about that. It, it looks cool. I like to show it off. Here's the universe. Here's where we're going to be going. This is what we're going to be doing. So, happy days. And no pink screen of death yet either. And the second to last building is the research and development. This is the tech tree. This is where we spend all of our lovely sciences on new parts and things and cool stuff. Which we'll get to at the moment. We have a basic fin, a command pod, a flea solid booster, solid fuel booster, solid rocket boosters. I thought they were called SRB. Anyway, um, mystery goo can. T oh, we get mystery goo first. Cool. I thought you had to buy that. The game's been through a few patches since I've last played, so there'll be some things that I've discovered. Uh, get a segment and parachute. That's all we've got. I thought we had bigger. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's get into it. So. Our first mission was to gather scientific data from Kerbin and to launch a vessel. I reckon we should probably have a go at that. Hmm. This, oh, I've got an idea. Because I want to put stuff on it. I should explain what I'm doing really, shouldn't I? Yeah, this is a great beginning video. Um, rather than, right, so I'll just go away in a moment now. Okay, doke. So, to begin build well, welcome inside the VAB. To begin building uh, any kind of rocket, you first need a pod. And um, we start off with the Mark 1 command pod. So we click that, and that goes into the middle of the screen. You can use the right mouse button to spin around, 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 around. As you can see, I'm doing now. That's fun. Go so dizzy. Uh, no, that's a lie. Don't go dizzy. Um, so, yeah, we've got the command pod. You left click it to move it around anywhere you want to. Okay, doke. Um, and obviously just wherever you put the mouse it is, if you meal, meal mouse, meal mouse, mouse wheel scroll up moves it up, mouse wheel scroll down moves it down, <coughs> excuse me, um, A and D, W and S will move it all around town, change where it's going to be and everything like that, um, so if we put that down, now mouse wheel down and mouse wheel up, if you hold shift, a mouse wheel out, you zoom out, and mouse wheel in, you zoom in. Uh, shift comes in quite handy in a few instances in this game, but for now we'll just stick to that. Uh, please excuse me while I go and blow my nose. It's doing my head in. And that's enough of that. Right, so where was I? Yes, uh, shift comes in handy, but we'll get round to that. So, what we want to be doing is we've got our pod. This is where our curve and all is going to sit. We're going to need to put something on there that's going to help him fly. And at the moment, all we've got is a flea booster. So, sorry, if you left click on it, don't click and drag on it. You just left click and it will attach it to your cursor. You can see where the little green bits are, the green spheres on there. That'll snap parts together for you, and you know they've snapped. Because they turn from red to green, it's quite simple. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you attach and disattach parts. Again, you can twist these all around and stuff like that. That's quite cool. Uh, you can also change how many parts you put onto somewhere with the X and Shift X key. Um, I'll probably best shown with this. Um, so yeah, I've snapped that one on there. If you hold Alt and left click on a part, it will reproduce it for you. And now uh, if I press X. You can't see it very well, can you? Look, it's going to put two on, and it's going to put them on in symmetry for you, okay? Which is quite nice. Um, you can also have an angle snap, so that you see this one there quite fluidly round. I say quite fluidly round; it doesn't look like it. They fit around quite f fluidly. Yeah, you can move them; they can be there, or I can put them there or there. And I, I can see you can see they're snapping, but they could be anywhere. If we put angle snap on, they will literally just go to different places at an angle and snap there so you can move left and right a little bit and it doesn't actually move them although I've got my mouse up too high the sensitivity on that so that's how the angle snap works there so pressing X puts multiple and pressing shift X so X add ones adds one shift X adds uh, takes one away so X X X X X X X or shift X X X X okay no, that's nice and simple I explained that really well I think um, we want to bring this back down to F. Um, I'm going to put some stuff on it. So the reason I've put this girder up here, I'm going to put some stuff on it. I'm really, yeah, great beginner's guide. Um, I've put this girder up here because I want to attach more than one parachute, and I'm pretty sure you can do that with a girder. Um, so we'll put a parachute on top there. Alt click it. You can't do that. Why can you not? Why? Can, just why? Fine. Screw you, hippie. We'll put the parachute on top of there. 
because obviously we want our cable to return safely that's quite important um, and we'll put our science experiments on here as well we're going to put two because hopefully we'll get to two different heights so we put two on there now you want to try and keep every craft you make as aerodynamically sound as possible um, aerodynamics is real physics is for the most part real um, and a lot of the way that your ships will react and a lot of the way that things work in this game are true to life if not true to scale I think it's quite important to say that the planet Kerbin as I have it now as the developers have it now is not the same size as planet Earth it takes a lot less fuel and a lot less time to get off of Kerbin than it would off, would off of Earth but relatively all the rest of the science and everything behind it is the same um, so if you're a bit like me and you want to totally geek out about it you can you can get really keen on it and try and work out orbital mechanics and you know there's lots of stuff you can read up on the internet um, there's a guy called Scott Manley he does an awful lot of cable videos uh, and is an astrologer I can't remember which one it is not one of the fuckers that tries to tell you your future one of those people that knows about space and stuffs yeah he's one of them uh, and he's good he's bloody good at the game as well um, he's done a couple of videos about orbital mechanics and calculating f the delta v you'll need which is the delta v I'm not even going to try and explain what delta v is yet I'll show you that at another point um, I'm rabbiting on far too much here is our first made rocket it has a command pod for the Kerbinot it has a solid rocket booster which is a engine which is entirely full of fuel and once turns off cannot be engaged or disengaged and cannot steer itself in any way it is literally pure power we have a goo canister so that we can see what happens to this goo in different places like different altitudes uh, the atmosphere the hot and the cold all kinds of different things and we have our parachute um, down here we have our staging uh, it's good that I've built such a small rocket because I can let me show you what this means at the moment when we begin the staging for our rocket if I was to hit first stage the parachute would open the engine would turn on the craft would shoot up in the air the parachute would break and once it ran out of fuel this would crash back down to earth and we would lose our pilot who should be Jeb and we do not want to lose it losing losing Jeb is heartbreaking I know it's going to happen but it is heartbreaking it's going to happen because I make a stupid mistake um, but yeah, all fun and games. Um, I've never actually played it this full on hard mode before, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, it might just be a complete and utter shambles, and then someone has to win me. Why does that even happen? Oh, let's just turn this phone off. That's so annoying. There we go. That's that done. Sorry about that. Yeah, I should have just stopped the video, really, shouldn't I? Not to worry. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll add a stage down here, and all the, sta the stages work from the bottom of their way up. Okie doke. So, now when I press spacebar, that rocket's going to fire, and when I press it again, the parachute is going to deploy. Um, I'm pretty sure that's covered the basics. You have seen how to put parts together. Show you what the parachute does. I could have a quick talk with the solid rocket boosters, the girders. Oh, let's put some fins on it, shall we? Yeah, let's put some fins on just for that little bit of extra control. Let's pop three fins on to make it a bit more aerodynamically sound than anything else, although that's probably overkill. Um, aerodynamics really do make a difference in this game. If you've built a janky rocket, it ain't going to fly. It's that simple. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, right, so here is our first rocket. Um, we shall call it BRG Alpha. Why not? Oh, you can see a pattern for me. I reckon I might do the next one, Bravo and Charlie. And well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what kind of mood I'm in. Um, yeah. Please don't die, Jeb. I should probably call it. Please don't kill Jeb. <laughs> right, let's get this out to the launch pad and see what happens. Um, I didn't show you these, did I? When I did them, 
we'll do that in the next build. We'll go over all these buttons in the next build. If you come up here, um, you've got load, new, load, save, and launch. We go ahead and click launch now and get this out onto the launch pad. Okay, look, there we go. We can see we have a rather funky looking launch pad. We have Jebediah Kerman in there, as he is, he is down here. Um, right, experiments and stuff. There are several experiments that you can do in KSP. Uh, one of our missions, as we took earlier, uh, was to collect some data. So, let's observe the mystery goo on the launch pad. Let's see what it says. The goo doesn't seem to be doing much right now. No, but we still got three science if we recover this vessel. So we'll go ahead and click keep that data. We could transmit it for 0.5 science. So we obviously, we're going to get 30% of the science value. As you can see, we can transmit it, but we don't have an antenna and why would we do that we're here so let's keep that data um, you can also do a crew report and bear in mind this is the first time that these will have been done so there's 1.5 science right there we'll take that um, and we can also do an EVA report let's get Jeb out onto the side there we go Jeb's there EVA report now you see it says EVA report while flying over Kerbin shores that is because he is an actual fact flying um, I don't know why they haven't changed that, but they haven't, so it, that is what it is. And that's a quick 5.6 science there, and we'll take that and keep that. So at the moment, we've probably gained about 7 or so, I mean, I didn't even read it properly. World first milestone. We performed an EVA test at home. We got 3,200 quid just for doing the EVA. Very nice. Thank you. Happy days. Um, okay, look, so if we right-click on here and take all the data and then store the experiments you know that crew report I did we can then do another one whilst we're in the air because we've removed the data and then stored it in the hatch I don't know why it works that way but it does so basically if I took a crew report now and then flew off into the air and all zoomed up nice and high and did another one it would be like uh, you've already got one in there do you want to replace this one with the one you've just taken or do you want to keep it in the sky with the one you've just taken and you're like what I want both but you can't have them so yeah, there's a little get around. If you can do an EVA, perform EVA, which you won't be able to do in the air or out in space until you get to a certain level uh, and upgrade buildings enough, because um, you know they need to be skilled at doing these things. Um, yeah, there's a nice way of doing it. So we've taken all of the data that we can whilst we're here. We've still got an unused canister. So what we should really do is prepare for launch. Now, here we have our nav ball. Um, pretty sure everyone will understand the basics of this it's one of those 360 compasses that sits in oil that you can twist and turn and this bit always faces up because we're always subject to gravity um, it's obviously got all the different different uh, varying degrees um, uh, it represents the, the planet and our, our current trajectory path and everything uh, whilst we're on it um, it's a good indicator of which way your ship is facing when you're in space depending on what you've got it set to but I'm rambling and getting ahead of myself again so let's ignore that for now this is the nav ball um, there are a couple of things you can do with the nav ball if you press R it turns on this little, little light comes on for RCS um, which we don't actually have on this one that's a reaction control system um, and a reaction control system you know when you see space shuttles up in space and they're moving around really slowly and you keep getting that little psh, psh of these little jets of what looks like air that are jetting out and moving them all around yeah that's RCS, that's monopropellant fuel um, and that's a, that's a reaction control system uh, we don't have one of those on here so we'll turn that off uh, you press T for SAS, stability assist um, which is essentially your autopilot which means that your pilot will do everything it can to keep your craft on its current heading uh, always nice to have that on um, and you can make it more powerful uh, in the future with reaction control wheels depending on the size of the vessel um, and you'll certainly want it on when you're trying to fly planes around uh, and again I'm probably getting ahead of myself um, so yeah lots of talking uh, I think I've explained everything that you would need to know about what we've done so far um, we've still got that there, oh I'll tell you what we'll do one more thing quickly, we're going to keep SAS turned on holding down shift and holding down control. This is throttle control. 
uh, yeah, this is throttle control. So obviously, that means that when you've got a rocket that will allow you to control its throttle, you can do so with this, or hit Z and X. Z automatically maximum, X automatically shuts it off. Shift for up, shift for down. Because we've got a solid rocket booster, okay, we can't control that at all. Um, we could have done it in the VAB if I'd have right clicked it, which is what I just did, just to see. If we'd have right clicked it in the vehicle assembly building, you can set the speed um, and how much fuel and stuff's in it, but I didn't do any of that. Um, I think, without further ado, we've got Jeb in there, he's okay. Our first stage is our rocket, our second stage is our parachute. I think we're ready to go for a launch. So we'll go for the first launch, we'll watch the rocket fly up, we'll wait till we get up as high as we get up, we'll take our experiment, do another crew report, and then come back down and recover the vessel and have a quick chat about what happens there. So without further ado, the first launch of Season 2 of BRG Plays KSP. I've got to figure out a better way of saying that. BRG Plays KSP. It does my head in. Um, oh, go away. Now you're seeing all my friends. I haven't got many. Um, yeah, so without further ado, again, let's launch this vessel in 5, 4, 3, 2, good luck Jeb! There we go! Rocket shooting up, let's just tilt it over to the right quickly with D. Um, D, W controls the pitch of vessels. There we go, that's got done quite nicely, I think pitch is the right word. The pitch and the yaw. W, A, S, D like a plane so I can move it, as you can see, get away with this. Like so. The fins are actually stopping it from from going too far, which is nice. Uh, we've shot up quite a ways. I'm going to try and get over a little bit just uh, when we're starting to lose speed. So we've hit 8,000. Let's go ahead and observe the mystery goo here and take another crew report. 3.5 science there and 7 science from the goo. Very nice. Now as we're falling back down, I'll press spacebar again to release the parachute. Okay that will automatically slow us down. If I had waited until we were... Oh, I know why that's happened because the fins are trying to force... The aerodynamics are forcing me that way. If I'd have waited until we'd got up to like 300 meters per second as we were forward to hit the parachutes, they would have ripped off uh, the second I opened it. Um, I tilted away from KSC mainly because if there was a problem, if you f something happens with the launch and you fall back down to here and you crash into a building you're going to damage it, blow it up and have to pay to repair it which sucks um, so yeah first successful launch everything went smoothly-ish managed to make sure that we're landing away from KSC which is good the chute has just opened, is it going to do it quick enough? yes it is very nice there's my shadow, that's always good to have shadows um, I'm hoping the new PC is showing this really, really nicely. Um, I did make a dummy video with Rocket League uh, about an hour ago, um, just to test out the microphone and stuff like that. The microphone is dreadful. I've got a new one, it's CAC. Um, I'm about, I don't know, maybe two weeks away from getting a proper one. I'll probably get a proper condenser and stuff like that. Um, so that you haven't got to put up with the dreadful sound quality, but I did want to get a new video up and out there, so it was, it's just been too long, uh, and I was really looking forward to doing it, so I did it. And there we go, landed back down safely, everybody's happy, we've got all of our data, so if we move up to here, which I didn't talk about, I'll do that in, on the next one, and um, we move up to here, it's just, you can go straight to the space centre and just leave this here, where we hit recover vessel. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll hit recover vessel, we'll have a quick look at the science that we've got, a quick look at the tech tree, uh, I'll end this video here. Um, and carry on with the series in the next video. Um, so, uh, as you can see, um, the science that we recovered from that gave us in total 34 science. I think that might be something to do with these as to why we've got more. Um, the crew report gave us 3.5, the EVA report gave us 5.6, the, the report from the launch pad, the goo from the launch pad, and then the goo from flying and recovery where it is. Recovery of a vessel that survived a flight as well it gives us five sites. So that's cool, so we go ahead the parts. Because we landed at KSC we got 98% value back from the parts. So the our rocket, because we managed to keep it all, uh, we can even repack the chute, we got 98% of its value back. So all of the money we spent on it we got paid for from by the uh, missions 
and we also got a lot of the money back which is fantastic as you can see there so we got 2,757 and we've gone from 25 to having 120,000 credits and I'll go through that as to why in a second Jebediah he gained an XP happy days as crews um, level up they become more skillful they can do more things for you um, and make it easier for you to fly your rockets but we'll go through that so we'll go ahead and happy with that we're done we've got 34.6 sites uh, if we come up here these are where our active contracts are gather scientific data from Kerbin achieve goal did I really not accept the launch a vessel one can I swore I did hmm. yeah I did so it should be in there um, world's first milestone We've broken a record speed launched our first vessel broken a record a record speed broken a speed record altitude altitude so this is where we got the extra sciences from for breaking all of these milestones um, recovered our return to the surface recovered our crew performed for the first experiments at home so 9000 9000 9000 9000 it quickly adds up to get you going with the world's first so that's fantastic um, and we complete the contract from Kerbin for gather scientific data so we'll discard that and we launched our first vessel as well so that will explain why we got all of the science and um, bits and pieces that we did yeah okay that's fine thank you go away wonderful um, so let's head over to the research and development tree quickly um, these both cost five, five science each they give us a liquid fuel engine a bigger booster and a fuel tank obviously we can't use liquid fuel engines without a fuel tank so we'll go ahead and get that and this one here offers us our science junior bay which is a lot more experiments in one place um, rendering you a lot more science a communitron can you guess what it is can you guess you know what's it about transmitting data that's your antennas to do so and a decoupler so yeah pretty handy we'll go ahead and grab both of those we've got 24 science left which means we could grab any one of these we want uh, I'm probably going to go straight for general rocketry um, because bigger fuel tanks and a gimbling engine the LVT45 is a gimbling engine which means the nozzle on it can change direction a bit like you've seen afterburners on planes do you know, the, the really cool ones that they move well that's what this does so it makes it easier for you to steer uh, and also makes it easier for your cabinet while your SAS is turned on do you remember that pressing T on the launch pad turned your stability assist on um, giving the pilot more control over the, the rocket yeah he'll have even more with that and we get a massive booster and an even bigger fuel tank although there is a little bit of me that says we need the heat shield and the radiators and the landing struts and the radial parachutes and the server no I'm gonna go ahead and buy this one because I can um, right so Join me again in the next episode, and we'll have a look at what all those parts do. Um, I hope the newbies out there have found this helpful. Um, I hope you enjoy watching the, the, the videos. Um, I will say I am an awful lot throughout all the videos. Uh, none of this is scripted. I don't do any of this. Oh, I want to be a famous YouTuber. I'm recording these because I like the sound of my own voice. I love playing this game. Uh, any questions, any criticisms, bring it on pretty thick skinned, don't really care, it might even be funny to watch me rage, shout at people over the internet like a keyboard warrior, um, yeah, I'll get the next video up as soon as possible, uh, I've been BRG, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all later.